This is Cephalaspis. She's a peaceful grazer who sucks up algae through her jawless mouth. But she's also developed a tough protective head and thick scales. Our ancestors' arthropod enemies have also been evolving. And they're ready for round two. A hundred million years have passed, and the fight for survival has filled the Silurian seas with variety. Some creatures here would be recognizable today. Sponges filter food alongside sea urchins. The orthocone is a distant relative of squid and cuttlefish, but he's as long as a truck. This world is terrorized by a new, improved generation of armored arthropods. Meet Brontoscorpio. He's a meter-long monster scorpion with gills and a stinger the size of a light bulb. He zeroes in on his next meal. But Cephalaspis has evolved an early warning system. Special sensors on her skin detect the tiniest vibrations in the water. We've inherited similar sensors. They make us sensitive to touch. With her defensive headgear, Cephalaspis can't swim fast for long. She must rest frequently. Soon, she'll tire completely. Cephalaspis suddenly changes her path. She's picking up bad vibrations, something Brontoscorpio can't detect. Pterygotus is the titan of sea scorpions the biggest arthropod of all time. More than three meters long, she's the size of a crocodile. She's turned the tables on Brontoscorpio. He'll make a good meal for her young. In such dangerous seas, there's nowhere to hide. When breeding season comes, the Cephalaspis congregate to head for the one place they might escape the scorpion's grasp. Fresh water inland. Land at this time is like an alien planet. It's a barren expanse of roasting rock hotter than the Sahara. The air would be toxic to us. It has much less oxygen and 300 times more carbon dioxide than today. But some forms of life have gained a foothold in this furnace. The first pioneering plants. Cooksonia has a unique survival strategy. It's the first plant to send shoots upwards, trapping extra light to help it grow. This basic design will eventually lead to our tallest forests. The 
Cephalaspis convoy plows upriver, away from the sea. They're making the marathon journey back to the spawning grounds where they hatched. Incredibly, our fish ancestors already use memory. They use familiar landmarks to navigate. Their toughened heads protect a vital weapon, one of the first complex brains. It's much more developed than their scorpion rivals, who have no memory at all. It's thanks to these primitive fish that we can think and solve problems today. But the fish have underestimated their enemy. It is the arthropods and not our ancestors who have taken the first momentous steps out of the sea onto dry land. Brontoscorpio has a huge advantage. As well as gills, he has simple lungs made up of hundreds of thin layers of tissue. He can't breathe in and out like we do, he just absorbs the oxygen into his blood. Equipped to maximize the little oxygen available, and with their armor to protect them from the sun, the scorpions patrol the shoreline, scavenging on whatever the sea washes up next. Finally, the fish approach their destination. They've navigated their way back to the spawning pool where their lives began. Weak from their long journey, now they have to cross a ridge of rock to make it from the river to the pool. The first fish make it through and start to lay their eggs. But the exhausted Cephalaspis have company. Passing scorpions have stumbled on this bounty. But the fish have numbers on their side. The clever Cephalaspis have navigated their way, while Brontoscorpio are only here by luck. They're soon stuffed to the gills, while the fish keep jumping. One scorpion is still hungry, but he can't feed. He's become a prisoner in his own skin. His rigid skeleton is now a handicap. It can't grow with his body. He needs to shed his hard skin and then grow another, expanding while the new one is still soft. For such a large creature, this is a long process. Next morning, there's no sign of life in the spawning pool. The scorpion has missed his chance. Our ancestors have survived. They've laid their eggs and are returning to the sea. Brain has triumphed over brawn, and soon they won't be such soft targets. 
evolution starts to give them weapons to fight back.